Now, it was your dog that did it. What? I can tell by the colour, so get it off my fucking lawn. Hi, everyone. Hi, welcome to the show. Welcome to News Thing. Hey, apparently the CIA are spying on us through our tellies. Enough of them to make Doris Henderson and number 32 Spencer Road the third highest rated show on Sky Atlantic. That's quite a good joke. Have we got a new writer? Did that man a pay rise? Uh, Stephen Hawkins had a go at Jeremy Corbyn this week. I tell you what, you might be able to split the atom, but you'll never be able to split Jeremy Corbyn from the Labour Party, am I right? Or was that the bloke from D. Ream who split the atom? I don't know, they probably worked on it together. So there's a new budget out this week. I'm not saying Britain's going down the toilet, but it would explain why Philip Hammond's been forced into a U-turn. You know, on taxes. That actually should be you, Ben. But you get the point. The joke works. There's something in it. You know what? Sack that fucking new writer. Fuck him. <coughs> it's Saturday night. It's almost live. And it's right up a big tower in London's Westminster. It's Sam Delaney's news thing. Sharing something in common with the budget this week. Punishes white van man. It's Merrick Larwood. Breaks own promises. It's London Hughes. Lives in a tiny red suitcase and gets fingered once a year by Philip Hammond. It's Jeff Norcott. Plus, our special guest. He's one of the Conservatives' top David Davies is, 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 is. No, not that one. It's the other one. David Davies, MP for Monmouth. Hello and welcome to Sam Delaney's News Thing. Thanks for joining me, panel. It was the budget this week, officially the most boring day of the year. I mean, what's the point? 2p on fuel, 1p on fags. 6% more national insurance if you own a diesel car, earn more than 26k in 2014 and work with your hands. I mean, none of it makes sense. And to be honest, it's all a waste of time now because Britain, in 2017, is so deep in the shit house already that tweaking the rates of tax or VAT or any of that other bollocks is a case of rearranging the deck chairs while the Titanic is sinking. Although that analogy doesn't even work anymore because we don't have a fucking shipping industry either. <laughs> a poxy budget at this stage of affairs is more like standing in the second twin tower after the first one's just been hit and suggesting a bloody stationary audit. <laughs> Let's look at the facts. <laughs> The NHS has just recorded its worst month on record for A&E waiting times. And because of the strain on overworked doctors, the number of surgical mistakes has doubled in the past year. The last words that most patients hear from their surgeons as they slip under anaesthetic is, the left kidney, is that my left or their left? <laughs> and there's no point having a scan to see if your cancer has spread because it just has. <laughs> It's not just the NHS that are under-resourced either. According to a police watchdog, the shortage in police staff now amounts to a national crisis. Some rural areas, such as Mid-Devon, are being covered by just two officers, one of whom just resigned from the stress. I mean, how can one constable be expected to foil a clotted cream heist while simultaneously investigating the murder in the fudge shop? <laughs> and a recent inquiry shows that the police are now failing to record more than 800,000 offences a year. There was a time when there was a policeman on every street corner. Now, you only ever see them once a year, self-consciously dancing in a Rasta hat at the Notting Hill Carnival. <laughs> Schools are fucked as well. Teachers are leaving the profession in droves due to the stress of it all. Teaching used to be the job you did when you couldn't be fucked doing anything proper. Now what are you supposed to do if you can't hack teaching? Go out and pick bloody strawberries. Good luck, mate, because they've already got some poor bastard from a war zone doing that for 2p an hour. <laughs> How has all of this happened? How has this once happy, safe, healthy and prosperous country become a skint, desperate, chaotic and hopeless shithouse? Well, the Conservatives took control in 2010 on the promise that they'd fix the economy after the banking crisis and years of what they claimed was Labour's overspending. Now, it's seven years later. The deficit they promised to eradicate is still there. Our debt has tripled. The NHS is dead. Forget about it. Prices keep going up and wages have stagnated. Everyone in the country is worse off. And the Tories are still trying to pin the blame on a government from a decade ago. And the current Labour leadership are doing nothing to expose the temerity of that bullshit because they hate Blair and Brown even more than the Tories do. <laughs> in summary, stop worrying about the future because the future is now and it's double fucked. Anyway, now that I've cleared all that up, we're joined by the Daily Mail City editor, Alex Brummer. Alex... You've yeah. written many analytical pieces over the years about the state of our economy and our country, and I'm guessing 
You're pretty impressed with my thesis. I'm not, not, in, not impressed in the least. Right. Um, first of all, you, you brought into a thesis about the public sector, um, which people in the public sector, and that includes the BBC, of course, the British Broadcasting Corporation, want you to believe that every part of the public sector is falling apart and so on. If you actually look Fact. at the funding for, for those bits of the public sector, it's the way they spend the money which is the problem. It's not about the amount Hang of on, money Alex. that they get. Hang on, Alex. Yep. Under this government... They have cut spending on the NHS every year as a percentage no, of GDP. Have... As a percentage of GDP. No, no, but in real... In, in real terms. In, in, in cash terms, the money's gone up every well, then, year. But, and we'll in continue cash terms, to, that's a cheat. And we'll continue cheap, to go you're up. You're spinning. And in, and in real terms as well. I'm sorry, I'm going to dispute what you're saying. OK. And then the police service, I mean, they're an absolute joke, actually, in the way they run themselves. I mean, a guy comes around to your house carrying a... A paper notebook in 2017 to record the they details can't of a iPads. burglary. They, they, of course, they can afford iPads if they did something about their over generous benefits, their short working lives, and the way that they organise themselves. I mean, this is, and the economy is doing rather well. In the last, um, in the last two or three years, we've outperformed every other major economy in the Western world. Um, we are growing at 2%. Now, that's not as good as we've had in very good years, but it's better than being in a slump. And actually, real wages are rising faster than inflation. This is the first year for 10 years when inflation is going to outpace wages. Well, it's all very well for you to sit there uh, disproving with your data the things that I have said <laughs> uh, and, well... and saying that I'm full of crap. But... It's just as easy for me to sit here and renounce everything I just said, okay. which is what I'm doing. Thank you, Alex Brummer. <laughs> OK, <laughs> pleasure. Jeff, like yeah. Alex, you are an appalling Tory. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the fact that this government broke a, 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 a massive, massive yeah. election manifesto pledge. Yeah, you does, turn... the, does it matter that uh, someone gets elected on the promise that they won't raise national insurance, then just raises it two years later? The, the, the problem is, is this economy's changed, right? You look, it has been growing. What he said was right, uh, wages have been growing. But the, the take from income tax has been going down. And why is that? It's because the selfish pricks like me, who set up as limited companies, we're not really limited companies, you know? And that's been going on. That started throughout the Labour years, has continued with the Tories. I think that Hammond was right to do it, even though it was a U-turn. And I also think that if you say you're a company, you need to have, like, a vending machine, do you know what I mean? Or like, like a Christmas party. You need to have some pointless sort of appraisal process. Marek. Hello. We've maxed out on alcohol and fag <laughs> tax, yeah. right? What else can we tax to raise money? Men's uh, razors. No, uh, Just I, saying. I would go for <laughs> yeah. wheelchair ramps. What's wrong with you? Right. Mm -hmm. Because I think uh, the, the toys are so far ahead now, they can do what they want. And if you... And if you tax wheelchair ramps, Stop. you're going to make a lot of Stop. money out Stop of it. Mm. But that's what they, that's <laughs> what they yeah. should do, because they, they could just see how, how much they can do without Labour fighting back, and they would still win the election, even yeah, if they, they did would. that. Yeah, they would, I know, it's ridiculous. London, yeah. uh, has there ever been any good news from a budget ever? Because all it is, ever is is this is what's going to cost more. What would you like to see happen in a budget? No, because I don't believe anything they say. No. So even if they tell me it's gonna, we're going to do all this stuff, I don't believe them. I don't believe the government at all. I used to think they were like really smart people that were better than me, mm. and they're actually just beneath me now. Yeah. Like after all the foolishness, we've got a prime minister that I don't even know. Like I didn't ask for her. Did you ask? Did your people? Not Nobody even else? he voted not even for he her. Voted for I mean, he would have done, like... but he couldn't. But as a feminist, you've not got some love for Theresa. She's out there. No, I don't. No. No, and I'm not okay, sure she wouldn't have love for me either. Do you know what I mean? I don't think I don't like her. I don't. I didn't like Margaret Thatcher. I didn't like any of them. You weren't around when Thatcher was around. I wasn't actually born. Yeah, but... to be fair. <laughs> so young. But uh, I, don't, I, I don't think she liked black people. So. Oh, really? Whoa, yeah. whoa. Thanks, panel. <laughs> now, let's talk about Stephen Hawking. No, no, you're thinking of Eddie Redmayne. This is Stephen Hawking. <laughs> and this is Eddie Redmayne. OK? Stephen Hawking has weighed into a political row this week when he said that Jeremy Corbyn was a disaster for the Labour Party. Traditionally, when Hawking wades in on any subject, it's like that bit in Jaws when Robert Shaw scrapes his fingernails down the blackboard and everyone shuts up, which is also the first sign your new supply teacher is mental. <laughs> At wet break, you see him standing outside on his own in the pouring rain, staring into space. Then he's teaching Year 10 physics without any trousers on. Next thing you know, he's vanished and nobody ever knew his name. <laughs> anyway, 
Stephen Hawkins has fought monumental odds to become the world's most famous theoretical physicist. And I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say, Stephen Hawking, why don't you just fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Stephen Hawking is a bloke whose prime concerns are whether matter and energy can escape from black holes or when his dinner's coming and who's going to change the channel so he can watch Top Gear. <laughs> Why would we assume he has a fucking clue about anything in between? I tell you what, Steve, I won't start guessing where the time is curved and you don't tell me if Man City can win the league. <laughs> it's like when Prince Charles comments on things in the real world. Who's he relating to when he thinks, right, am I wearing normal clothes today or ones with medals on and epaulettes and a sash? <laughs> Michael Jackson, that suit, that's the only <laughs> one he could possibly be relating to. Stephen Hawking's day-to-day -day life isn't like ours. He gets up, thinks, has lunch, thinks, then goes back to bed. Oh, Stephen Hawking's got strong views about Corbyn. How the fuck do you know? He might have just left caps lock on, so it looks <laughs> like he's shouting. <laughs> it could have just been an off-the-cuff remark to the bloke changing one of his tyres and replacing his oil filter, but everyone heard it because his volume was turned up. <laughs> he might have typed... That Corbyn's a bit shit months ago, but forgot to hit speak till last week. Who knows how many opinions he's got sitting in his outbox? <laughs> Maybe things he says are like the light from a dying star. We only hear them weeks after he typed them and he doesn't mean it anymore. Oh, God. There's no doubt in Stephen Hawking is a ledge. He's been played by Benedict Cumberbatch, Eddie Redmayne, Peter Capaldi as the 12th Hawking, and there are strong rumours that the next Hawking will be played by a woman. He's part of our <laughs> national fabric. We all admire Stephen Hawking. His achievements speak for themselves. How he managed to somehow carry on an illicit affair with his nurse whilst married is one of the great mysteries of the universe. Did she sneak into their bedroom while his wife was asleep and quietly fireman's lift him away for the night and put him back before she noticed? He should have won the Nobel Prize for that alone. So, Stephen Hawking, we salute you. You are the closest mankind will ever get to an actual real-life Davros. But it doesn't take an Einstein, a Hawking or even a Vorderman to tell us that Corbyn is a black hole into which the hopes and dreams of the Labour Party are being sucked. Panel, does Stephen Hawking just need to wind his fucking neck in? I feel sorry for Cor Corbyn because he's been bullied by someone he can't bully back. I mean, what's he going to do? Beat up a guy in a wheelchair? Mm. That, oh, oh. that would be... Yeah. Well, that's Can't my point. That's yeah. why Hawking gets away with so much. No! He's amazing! He's a genius! Can you stop disrespecting my babes on television well, like that? Why, why yeah. is he a genius? Because he knows about no. shit that none of us have seen. Have you seen a black hole, London? He could no. be making it up, so You yeah. don't know that exists. A computerised voice makes anything sound exactly. intelligent. Exactly. That's true. If they replace that voice with, like, the voice of Joey Essex, would we still mm. give such Maybe. weight to everything he says, Jeff? Well, I think the thing, uh, what Mary says is right. He's a difficult bloke to, to take the piss out of. That's why if he's saying that Corbyn's doing a terrible job, fair enough, Steve, you get in there, mate. Because at PMQs, they're always mugging each other off, aren't they? Once he's said his bit, what's Theresa May going to do? She's going to be just slagging off a disabled bloke now. I think that we found out that Hawking's a bully. He's not a bully! He, he's, he's a bully, bully. and right. it makes me worry. What if, makes he, him a bully? if he wasn't mm. in a wheelchair... He'd be going around beating the shit out of people. <laughs> Left, right and centre. So maybe we should do a thing of putting bullies... Thank God. ...putting bullies in wheelchairs to stop them. Thank God he doesn't have lasers built into his fucking chair. He probably chair does. For now. He, he could easily make it. them. He's just been nice to you guys. He can vaporise us all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, panel. After the break, we'll be talking to Tory MP David Davies about whether it's finally time for Wales to institute Sharia law. And we'll be revealing how the CIA have been spying on everyone through their tellies. Yes. Incidentally... John in Reading, you have a lovely penis. <laughs> <laughs>
in the mind of just one man, as far back as the 1980s. A man of such Machiavellian genius that he conceived of this technology back while Steve Jobs was still trying to beat the high score in Donkey Kong. <laughs> in the intelligence community, this man is known by various names. Agent Burgundy, Dr Febreze, Funkmaster 63, <laughs> The Little Horse, Alan Spencer. But you may know him simply as Noel Edmonds. The decade is the 1990s, and Saturday night television is dominated by knockabout game show Noel's House Party, back before it was possible to tell whether things were racist or just shit. The best and, scary, <laughs> the best and scariest part was always the segment known as NTV, in which Noel pioneered ideas the CIA would take another two decades to perfect, to put eyes and ears in the homes of the unsuspecting public. And we're going to go whooshing and whooshing and whooshing all the way to Harlow in Essex. Go. Hello, Gordon. <laughs> it was fucking creepy. But did anyone complain? Did they fuck? Because it was also hilarious. And they were too busy hoping this would be the week Noel caught someone wanking. <laughs> and according to urban legend, which is true, they wouldn't have to wait forever, as one week Edmonds hatched a plan to surprise Chris Evans with an NTV segment in his house. Unfortunately, the plan backfired as Evans wasn't watching Noel's house party, oh. like the rest of the Western world, but had switched over to Baywatch while his wife was out. And as the story goes, the house party production team realised too late that Evans watched Baywatch for one reason and one reason alone. No, not to get a basic primer in CPR. I'm talking about wanking. If you want dystopian sci-fi horror from the future, it's not the CIA hacking your camera and seeing your chin while you play Candy Crush on the bus. It's Noel Edmonds ruining a crafty Saturday evening wank live from Crinkly Bottom. And it already happened 20 years ago. Assange, if I were you, I'd stick something over your webcam. Panel, do you ever do anything it would be worth the CIA even seeing? Like? Yes. Oh, God, of course. Really? Yes. Are you going to tell us what that is? No. Ah. Go on, what, Snapchat channel, mate. It's mate. Quality. What do you do to combat these shadowy forces? I always cover the little circle thing on mm. the little laptops, because you, ne you never know who's watching. But we were saying earlier, you broadcast on Instagram yeah, the whole time. Yeah, that's with my consent. Like, I'll be like, hey, look at my life. But you could just... <laughs> like, I'll let everyone look at my life if I let them, but it, I don't know. But like not the stuff, the yeah. private, and... the dark, yeah, the no. disgusting things that all of us yeah. do before our computer screens. It is a bit rich, people getting worried about CIA, seeing them do things, Merrick, when actually we type into a Google search bar every day some of our deepest, darkest insecurities. Yeah. I, I would mean, Google myself. My, my, my number one, <laughs> really? my number one yeah. Google term yeah. for a year was, you know, it says your name and then the thing most associated with you was Merritt Larwood retarded. <gasps> no! <laughs> <laughs> Are you being serious? Yeah. I've got a photo of it. No, Merritt Larwood, that's... that's the first thing people go, <laughs> what? Oh, hang on a minute. I don't know about a check if he's... Um, if you, could, you, you had a chance to set the record straight with the nation yeah, tell, now, him, tell us. Um, well, here's my theory of how you can stop this stuff, is that you, you second-guess these people, so you're worried about them taking photos of you whilst you're on the toilet. Mm. You put that stuff out there first. You gain control of it. You post videos yeah. of you having a shit on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. and then you think, what are you going to do now? Can't what are you going to do to me what, now? Would you put ever, it all out there. Would yeah. you mind if someone was watching you while you was doing all... I think... A bashing the bishop. Would you care? Or would it make it sexy? You uh, like I imagine. You like it. Yeah, I you imagine like it. it. That, people... That's how I get my kids. Like well, it all depends. Yeah, when I think of CIA, I think of sexy people. So I'll put on, <laughs> I'll put on a bit of a show. Yeah. 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 He said how many watches you've got. Yeah. And, and it started going down. Yeah. I'm really upset. You'd have to do things to keep your CIA audience happy, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think, mm. right, tomorrow night I'm going to have to wear the hey, mask. Is that like, the Truman Show? Like, You'd have to keep raising the bar. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, panel. There now follows a message from the Right Honourable Jeremy Corbyn. Hello, I'm Jeremy Corbyn. I'm the leader of the Labour Party. That's right. I'm the fucking leader. Get used to it. You know, people, they say to me, they say, Jezza, what's the story about this hat? Well, that's true. I, I was actually given this hat by Ben Valpierre Piero from Curiosity Killed the Cat. Remember them? A great fucking band. Oh! <laughs> the perfect combination of pop, soul, jazz and funk. 
straight back down. Remember it? <laughs> he knows. <laughs> yeah, I did a bit of roading for them in the 80s on a US tour. <laughs> yeah, we tried ecstasy together for the first time on the dance floor of a Chicago nightclub. Ended up getting off with each other. Now, we agreed never to talk about it, but whenever I wear this hat, <laughs> I think of Ben. Wonder if he's watching. Miss you, mate. Well. We're now joined by David Davies, hardworking Conservative MP for Monmouth and South Wales and disgraceful Brexit apologist. Welcome, David. <laughs> uh, good to have you back in the studio. Now, last time we had you on, a lot of compassionate, bleeding heart, bedwetting liberals like me were disgusted at your unwelcome attitude towards the Syrian refugees who desperately needed our help. Obviously, I've been a bit busy lately, like all of the liberal community, tweeting Donald Trump memes. So I've taken my eye off that subject, but basically it's all sorted now, right? Well, the refugee crisis isn't, but the vast majority of people coming illegally into Europe at the moment aren't coming from Syria. They're coming from Pakistan, Iraq, Iran and various countries throughout Africa. And I'd actually like to see more done to help the genuine refugees from Syria. Um, and a slightly, if you like, a slightly firmer attitude towards people who are coming for economic reasons. Um, isn't it true that whenever governments institute hardline immigrant vetting, they always end up mucking it up? Donald Trump's Muslim ban didn't exactly go smoothly, did it? Well, I'm not here to defend Donald Trump, but there was no Muslim ban. Um, there was a ban on people coming in from certain countries where there were links to terrorism. Now, I, I do think that most of the people who are complaining about Donald Trump are also the first to complain whenever they say America's getting involved in other people's foreign policies. And it's slightly ironic. They're trying to tell the Americans uh, what to do with their foreign policy. Let, let's not worry about the Americans. There are a lot of countries that do have involvement with terrorism and, and countries, nation states like America or Britain, surely have the right to decide who comes in and who doesn't and who gets vetted and who isn't. What about families getting split up, though? Well, I don't want to see families getting split up. I mean, that's one reason why we're, we're right to be supporting... I, I'm supporting the government totally in rejecting the Dubs Amendment, which is going to encourage people to send their children off um, by themselves across the world and into Europe in order to, to, to try and get into the United Kingdom. Tell me more about the Dubs Amendment, then. So you think that, actually, a lot of people think that that's just a, a horrible and, and cruel act by the government rejecting it, but, but you think it would actually lead to more families being divided? I, I do, because there are a lot of people in the world who are looking to get into um, European Union countries, particularly Britain, Germany and the Scandinavian ones, basically for economic reasons, and, and understandably so. I would probably want to do the same if I lived in one of those places as well. And if they know that they can send their children off by themselves, that the children, if, if they can make it into Europe, can claim asylum over here, then that's what they're going to do. And, and, and also, there's no willingness on behalf of any government, actually, to check people's ages either. They just take everyone at their word. You say you're um, um, 17, even if you've got grey hair and, and stubble, then, you know, everyone will say, yeah, OK, you're fine, you're 17, no problem at all. We're not going to check that in any way. If you were in charge of yeah. immigration policy... Oh, well, that'd be a good I, idea. You know, which yeah, I, I'm I'd sure you'd love that. to be, I and would, then, you, you know, you are very well informed on the subject. Uh, what countries would you be looking at to well, tighten up uh, restrictions on? I'd be looking at any countries where people are coming in in large numbers for basically for economic reasons. But I'd also try and ensure at the same time that, that countries with big growing economies with whom we want to do business like China are able to, um, uh, but that people from those countries who are coming over here for business reasons are able to come and go very easily. Um, countries like China, Singapore, Japan, lots of countries outside the European Union that we don't often think of which we could be doing business with. But, but definitely, I, I don't think we can have a situation where people are just coming in, either for economic reasons or coming in in very large numbers uh, to settle in the UK without wanting to integrate properly and to um, adapt their cultural beliefs to, to those of a liberal uh, European state like Britain. OK, uh, David, you are an expert in integration, as we've touched upon already. I think we can all agree that if we were to put together a utopian society in which people of all colours and creeds were treated equally, you, David Davies MP, would be the man to do it. With that in mind, let's see how you do with some tricky integration dilemmas as we play a game that we like to call... All right then, David Davies MP, integrate this! Now, I'm going to read out these tricky integration problems. You have to tell me how you would solve them. Uh, uh, problem one, Muslims demand that a Birmingham swimming pool in a heavily Muslim area institutes a mandatory burkini policy and removes all the frazzles from the vending machine. What should the local council do? Um, 
reject the bikini ban mm. or reject the uh, the bikini rules, yeah. um, but but think carefully about the frazzles. Really? Okay. But you think that, that just the existence of the frazzles might be uh, provocative? Uh, I'm. Oh yes, of course. They've got They're bacon, bacon in. They're they? bacon. Mm, this is yeah. the issue. Oh, no, no. Well, I think we, we should keep the frazzles as well, but offer some ready salted, and then people can pick and choose. So. A Ghanaian disco sets up next door to a Buddhist monastery. Yeah. The monks complain that the noise is ruining their vow of silence and <laughs> ask for the disco to be relocated. <laughs> what do you do? You've got two minorities offer, at odds there. Offer the monks um, a cut price deal on the booze and the entrance fee if they want to come over and enjoy themselves <laughs> and experience something a bit different. A British doctor claims he can precisely determine the age of refugee applicants by one quick jiggle of their testicles. Is that appropriate? <laughs> that would not be appropriate, but you could do it by um, x-raying their teeth, as I've said many times, and, 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 and in spite of what other people are saying. A Hindu yoga centre bans white hipsters from attending meditation classes because they believe they were reincarnated from venomous mm. snakes and can't be trusted. Should we respect their views? Um, what is a hipster, anyway? Like a trendy guy who lives in East London has a beard and rides well, around I'd on ban a city them, bike. Then definitely ban them. Yeah, I'm, I'm with, with you on that one. one. The devoutly Christian mother of the producer of this show demands that I stop swearing because it's not big or clever and it's stopping her from recommending this show to her mates. Is she right? You put a warning on the show, which people see before it comes up. Um, you're quite at liberty to say what you want. Thanks, David. Thanks also to my panel tonight, Marit Larwood, London Hughes and Jeff Norcott. Now, a lot of viewers will remember that last week we courted controversy when this happened. It's time to uh, <laughs> knight Mr Farage, oh, if you would like good. to kneel there. <laughs> Come on, then. Don't hurt me. <laughs> well, thank you. You are there now you Sir <laughs> Nigel Farage. My mummy says... You hate foreigners. No, no, Is little she? girl. No, 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 no. no. Right. You're not supposed to say that. <laughs> There you go. Uh, it caused feverish speculation all around the world. So let me quickly answer some of your questions about that stunt. Yes, we did do it on purpose. Yes, the child was an actress. No, Nigel Farage didn't know we were going to do it. No, he wasn't injured. It was an inflatable sword. No, I'm not a member of the Illuminati. Yes, I would like to be. And no, we will not be repeating the trick this week as we spent all our budget for this year on that inflatable sword. But of course, as my mum always said, some things cost money but accusing people of being racist, that comes free. So let me end the show by saying that each and every one of you out there is a racist and you sicken me. Good night.